Someone once gave a John Fuang a book on King Ashoka. And there was one passage in there that a John Fuang really liked. <clears throat> Toward the end of his life, King Ashoka stated that all the merit that he made, all the monasteries he built, jetties he built, all the support that he gave to the Sangha, he asked for only one thing in return. He didn't want to be a king again because he saw the, the dangers of power. All he wanted was to have an ability within himself, a capability within himself, to take care of his needs. Of course, his needs were that he wanted to then get an awakening. What he wanted were the abilities within himself to do that, so he could depend on himself. We say something similar when we chant the passages on the divine abidings or the sublime abidings. May I look after myself with ease. The question is, looking after yourself, and how far do you want that to go? Do you want to follow King Ashoka and say all the way to Nirvana? Or are you going to content yourself with something less? And where are you going to find those capabilities within yourself? We have to build them up. We all have the potential. As the Buddha said, the mind is luminous, which is why it can be trained. If the mind were dark, it wouldn't be able to see itself. The fact that it's luminous doesn't mean it's naturally good or naturally pure. It simply means that it's bright and it can see itself, it can observe itself. So we learn how to take advantage of that. We commit ourselves to the practice and then we reflect on it. If the mind were dark, we couldn't reflect. We would just be doing, doing, doing things like common animals without any reflection. But we have that ability to reflect and look at what we're doing and figure out what's getting good results and what's not. So we apply that outside. We see that being generous gets good results. Being virtuous gets good results. And the primary results, of course, that are good are in the mind. Because there are times when we're generous outside and there's a disappointment in one way or another. When we observe the precepts and we have to sacrifice certain things in order to maintain our precepts. But as long as we do, we develop a treasure within the mind. And that's the kind of treasure, as they say, that fire can't burn, water can't wash away. Even more so as we start to meditate. This is where we really learn how to depend on ourselves and develop a capability within ourselves. And no matter what happens in the world, we can learn how to look after the mind, make sure the mind stays in good shape. When the world outside is good, we don't get complacent. When it's not so good, we don't get depressed. We don't get discouraged. We realize goodness will out eventually. And so we keep on putting more energy into our goodness. And that's how we look after ourselves with ease. That's how we develop the capability within ourselves, that no matter where we go and no matter what happens, we'll have the inner resources we need in order to make sure that we're not causing ourselves any suffering, not causing anyone else any suffering. So King, think of King Ashoka's determination. And ask yourself, what's your determination? We're doing good here at the monastery. What do you want that goodness to yield in terms of its root for you. Try to choose something that's really good all around.